Hello, everyone, and welcome. Happy May. Oh, it's such a special day. It's May 1st. Um, originally, in ancient times, May 1st, May Day, was actually the celebration of flowers. So it was a celebration of spring, of renewal, of renewing energy. And I feel this is like hugely important and relevant right now because of what we've been going through in the last uh, few months and how there is this rejuvenation of energy, rejuvenation of the earth and sprouting these beautiful flowers, the buds on the trees. So this practice is a blossoming practice, is an energizing practice. It's also grounding and stabilizing. So uh, many, many, many years ago, the backstory for this practice is that um, I attended a practice, a workshop with a yoga teacher named Barry Reisman, and she's an excellent yoga teacher. She now lives in Sutton, and she just wrote an amazing book on yoga, but she taught this beautiful practice on May 1st, maybe 15 years ago. And um, in it, she talked about the symbol, sim, symbolism of the maypole. So the maypole was, you know, this pagan ceremony, like in ancient times where, um, where children would run, run around this pole with these ribbons, and it was a celebration of spring. So it was like the rejuvenation, the bring back of the color. So the maypole is that stable grounding force and the the ribbons are these beautiful flowy expansive expressions of spring so in our practice today we'll do that dual nature of grounding and stability and free mobility expansive movement like the ribbons of the maypole inspired by barry barry reisman's practice of 15 years ago um, but let's at first let's take a moment to ground and stabilize ourselves on this beautiful spring day, it is raining where I am, but that doesn't make it any less beautiful. So let's take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Feeling your hips stable on the ground. The spine long and extended like that maypole. Imagine the maypole is like a flab pole, it's like the mast of a ship. It's in the center of town or in the center of the festivities, honoring the goddess of flora, the goddess of flowers. And imagine that your outer body, your arms, your legs are as soft and fluid as the ribbons of the maypole. Feel a lightness in your chest, the coming of spring in your body, the rejuvenation of your energy, the return of the light. You may even feel like there's a widening in the front of the heart, like you're creating a smile across your chest from the heart upwards towards your shoulders. And perhaps that smile is even reflected onto your face. Perhaps you'll feel that smile in the corners of your lips, lifting towards your eyes. And maybe in the corners of your eyes. As you breathe, relax the outer body. Sit back in the sitting bones. Feel the grounding sensation of connecting into your sitting bones and the expansive sensation of growing tall, regal, elegant, just like the maypole. A blossoming in the crown chakra at the crown of your head, an opening to possibilities, to the energy of renewal, to the peace and love that is possible when we tap into it. 
and the connection between the different parts of ourselves, starting with our right and left brain hemispheres. So connecting the right and, brain, right and left brain hemispheres, kind of like creating a bridge, a smile, if you will, an arc between the two. Imagine that there is a smiling action in the brain connecting the two halves. Take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Just emerge that connection even more in the different parts of ourselves, which is also representative of the different parts of our environment, our lives, and the differences in each other. Let's connect through the alternate nostril breathing, which is a balancing breathing exercise. We'll block the right nostril, breathe out through the left. Then we're gonna breathe in through both nostrils. And you can block the left nostril, breathe out through the right side. Release and breathe in slowly through both. Block the right nostril, breathe out the left side. Release, breathe in through both sides. Block the nostril, breathe out through the left. Excuse me, breathe out through the right. <laughs> breathe in through both. And breathe out the other side. Breathe in through both nostrils. And breathe out the other side. Breathe in through both. Breathe in slowly, like you're sniffing a flower. And then breathe out through one side. And we'll just keep going at your own pace. If you feel like your sinuses are a little bit tight, you can open them up by stretching them out to the side. So if you've done alternate nostril breathing before, you'll know that this is clearly a variation of it. It's a little softer version. Let's do one more round. And we'll finish with the end of your next exhalation on the right side. When you're ready, just go back to regular deep breathing. Expanding, feel that opening action in the in the diaphragm in the ribs in the front and in the back can you bring a smile into each of your lungs it's like an expansion in the lungs can you bring a smile expansion feeling in the right side of the body where your liver is on the side, that opening. And on the left side where your stomach is, smile in your stomach. I know that seems weird, but we're creating space, right? We're just creating space for possibility. 
in your pancreas and spleen, which are on the left, just tucked under the stomach. And in the back body where your kidneys are, just at the base of your ribs. Smiling so the, the, the kidneys kind of open up that space in your back. Can you allow your sitting bones to do like a smiling action so that they, they support you stable and they also expand? So then you're gonna slowly release your posture. Inhale, take your arms overhead, extend tall, grow tall, and then exhale, side bend, side bend. Just sway to the side. And keeping your sitting bones grounded, inhaling, coming up, and exhale, side bend. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling, coming up, and exhaling, going to the side. Hold it here for a moment. And then inhale, come up. Let's go back to the first side and we're gonna do a big side bend. And then we're gonna do a slow circle in front, imagining that your arm is like the ribbons of this maypole. Inhaling up and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's do one more round. Slowly coming up. Let's take the other arm alongside the ear. Side bend. Stay here for a moment. And then slow circle in the front and coming up. And around. And breathing. Feel that nice stretch in your back. Coming up. And one more time around. And slowly release. If you're not already there, come to the top of your mat. Come to the top of your mat. Am I going to be cut off? No. Great. Come to the top of your mat. And we're just gently going to keep the feet fixed. So this is grounding, both heels on the ground. And we'll slowly begin to twist side to side like so. Side to side. So this is really, could be called the maypole posture. So the spine is really stable, right um, in alignment directly with the ground, and you're just turning your arms around the central axis, turning your torso around the central axis of your spine. So now we're gonna imagine that we're still in that maypole position, but we're gonna pivot on the back heel and twist like so. So allowing your arms to just wrap themselves around your body, releasing slowly. Relax your arms, let them swing out to the side. Imagining that you really are this maypole. And then slowly release. Let's come to the top of the mat. And let's find our mountain position stable down through the four corners of the feet, growing very tall through the spine, and then allowing your arms to float up. Growing tall, when you take your arms up, let's pull the ribs in, shoulders down. Let's leave the right arm where it is, and let's bring the left arm down, the side bend, side stretch. Maintaining the stability of the torso and the legs come back up. Side bend. Nice, coming up. Inhale, take both arms up. Exhale, fold forward, bring your hands to your shins and bow your head. Inhale, let your upper body be light. Exhale, fold over your stable lower body. Keep the lower body, the legs stable. Inhale, float upwards with the arms. And exhale, everything light. Stable but light. Inhale. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Firming your legs, inhale, float the arms overhead. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, extend. This time we're going to add on. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, let your heart lift. And let's take the left leg back, lower the knees. Let's float the arms up, maybe not all the way. And exhale, let's float the arms down. Tuck the toe under and step back into a plank. Pause in plank pose. Try to find that maypole position through the body. Then lower your knees. Let's keep the arms and legs in a fixed position without locking your elbows. And let's let the spine be smooth and fluid, like the ribbons of the maypole. Let it flow, let the breath flow through your torso. And then tuck your toes under, round your back, and let's come into downward facing dog. Let's stay here for a moment. Extending, let your head sway. On your next inhalation, look towards your hands and you can lower your knees to the floor if you'd like and then step your left foot forward. Point your toe behind you and again, let's let the arm, legs stay, let the arms float up. And then exhale, hands down. Inhale, step forward, let the torso lift. And exhale, fold over your stable legs. Keeping the legs stable, inhale, float your arms up. Exhale, take your arms down. Keeping legs strong, inhale, float the arms up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, float your heart forward. Exhale, let's take the right leg back, lower your knee to the floor, point your toes. Inhale, let's take the arms up, lifting the heart. And exhale, hands down. Place the hands, tuck your toes under. Let's come into plank. Pause. Exhale, knees down. Soften between the tail of the shoulder blades. Arch the back. Then rounding the spine, look towards your navel. Then inhale, arch your back. And then exhale, round your spine, look towards your belly button. Inhale, arch your back, looking up. Then tuck your toes under, lift your knees, stretch back into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath, light. Stable legs, inhale, let's take the right foot forward. You can lower your knees down first, of course. Point your toe behind you, inhale, let your arms float up. Again, maybe not all the way, exhale, hands down. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, fold. Firming your legs. Inhale, lift. And exhale, let the arms float down back to the heart. Again, legs strong. You can bend and extend to lift the arms up. Then exhale, folding over your stable legs. Inhale, let the heart lift. Exhale, take the left foot back, lower your knees. Point your toe behind you. Inhale, let the arms float up. Exhale, float the arms down. Tuck your toes under, let's step back into plank. Pause for in a plank pose for a moment. Let's find the grounding here. Let's do two breaths. And then lower down, point your toes. Slide your elbows forward, stretch your heart. Let the heart lift. And then exhale, let the heart come down. Slide the hands back. Let's sit back into child's pose. Relaxing the head towards the ground. Deep breath into your back. And out. Inhale, coming forward. Tucking your toes under, lifting your knees and stretching back. Couple deep breaths. Bending the knees now, inhale, let's take the left foot forward, lower the knee, point your toe. Inhale, let the arms float up. Keeping your legs stable and spring the hands down. Inhale, step forward, lift the heart, long spine. Exhale, fold over your stable legs. 
Keeping your legs strong, inhaling, floating up, and exhaling, letting the arms come down. Inhale, lift the chest, let the arms flow. Exhale, fold forward, releasing the head. Keeping legs strong, inhale, lifting the heart, placing the hands lightly, and stepping the right foot back. <laughs> you know that I always have trouble with my rights and my lefts. Inhale, let the arms come up. Exhale, bring the arms down. Let's step back into plank. And again, we'll hold it for a couple breaths. Finding that maple-like stability through the back body into the legs and even into the back of the neck, out the crown of the head. Let's lower down now, slide the elbows forward. Lengthen the tailbone, lift the heart. Couple deep breaths. Separating your elbows, coming down, slide your hands back, lifting your chest, exhaling, sitting back into child's pose. Inhaling, coming forward, tuck your toes under, exhaling, moving back into downward facing dog. Let's do a couple of deep breaths. You can allow your body to undulate with the breath. Inhaling, looking forward, you can let your right foot step forward, lower your left knee, point your toe behind you, let your arms float up. Exhale. Inhale, step forward, exhale, fold. So there's a lightness in the upper body as you come up and releasing your hands down. Legs strong, let's do Saraya Namaskar A. Exhaling, so coming into a flow, but keeping stability, connection with the ground. Step your left foot back and your right foot lower down. Inhale, let's do Baby Cobra. Exhale down, so let's do Three, inhaling, exhaling, legs strong, exhaling, one more, exhaling, so you can sit back in child's pose or you can make your way right into downward dog. Let's do a few deep breaths, lift your belly button and stretch back, lengthen your spine. Let your breath be fluid like the ribbons of the maypole. Expanding around the central axis of your spine, expanding the ribs, letting your ribs and your lungs open like the petals of a flower. Bending your knees, exhale completely, looking towards your hands. You can step left foot forward, then right foot forward. Inhale, be light in the torso. Exhale, stable in the legs. Maintaining the stability as you push yourself up. Exhale, releasing the hands. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, let's do right foot back. Yeah, right foot back and then left foot back coming into plank and lowering down. Inhale, cobra. This time we'll go right back into downward facing dog. Let's breathe deeply. Mending your knees, looking towards your hands. Let's step the right foot forward, followed by the left foot. Exhaling, firming your legs, inhaling, rise. Exhaling, hands to heart. Let's do a variation of Surana Muscar B. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, touch the floor. Inhale, raise your arm. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, place your hands and maybe you can hop back or skip back or jump back. Find the plank. Let's lower from the knees or from the toes, elbows into ribs. You could come down and do Cobra. Or you can straighten your arms, keep your pelvis off the ground, press on the tops of the feet, lift the knees for upward facing dog. 
Please note that my chest is right in between my upper arm bones and my arms are perpendicular to the floor, straight up. Shoulders right over my hands. One more breath. And tuck the toes under. Push the stable arms, lengthen backwards. Deep breath in and out. Now keep stability in your arms and shift your weight into your left leg. Inhale, let your right leg come up. Stretch back to the toes of the right foot. Relax your head. Now exhale, let's bring the knee forward, rounding your back. Inhale, so some fluidity. Exhale, contract your core. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. This time, carry the right foot forward in between your hands, coming into a lunge. Keeping your stability in your back leg, like make that back leg the maypole. Let's bring the arms alongside your body. Stable foundation with your legs. Pressing deeply into that right foot, keeping the right knee over the ankle. Leaning forward, you can place your hands on your knee and pull in your ribs. So create the maypole experience in your back body, right through the heel. And then with your arms, be like the ribbons. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, go back. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, come back. This is only possible if your foundation is stable. Exhaling back. Inhale, lift the heart a little bit more with the arms. Exhale, back into that diagonal line. Inhale, bend up. And find your balance, fold forward. Again, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, this time we'll bring the hands down. We'll slide the foot back, coming into downward dog. You can stay here for three breaths, or you can bring your torso forward, coming into an upward facing dog, and moving into a downward facing dog. Taking a deep breath in and a slow breath out. On your next inhalation, lift the left leg. Let's keep the hips square. Find the maypole experience through the arms, back body, hip, left leg. Then we'll slowly bring in the fluidity, keeping the arms stable, right leg stable. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, and let's carry the foot forward, coming into a stable, stable position, stable lunge through the legs. Again, create the maypole experience in the back leg, lifting the ribs away from the front thigh, front knee over the ankle, stable legs. When you're ready, extend the arms alongside your body, long neck, long spine. Inhale, let the arms flow forward. Exhale, take your arms back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift the heart a little bit more. Exhale. Inhale. Keep the legs stable. Can you scissor your legs so that the the front line, the midline of the body becomes more stable. Lift the heart. Exhale. Inhale, lift the heart. And exhale, bring your hands down. Step back into plank. In breath. Out breath, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Firming the arms. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do a couple of breaths. One more breath. Bending your knees, keep your arms stable, create the maypole experience in your arms. Step or jump your feet forward, lifting your heart, and exhale, folding over your stable legs. Keeping your legs firm, inhale, the arms float up. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bend your knees. Let's come into Utkatasana. Let's create a stability in the legs by just creating um, 
a little structure, pushing inwards with the hands, outwards with the knees. Lift the lower belly, raise your arms. So imagine you a little bit of a bent maypole here, but the arms are stable. Inhale, push off. Exhale, fold over those stable legs. Keep the torso strong. I mean, keep the legs strong, keep the torso light. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, place your hands. Again, you can step or jump back, coming into plank, lowering into chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath here. And pause. So this time we'll do a half step forward with the left foot, turning the toes out to the side. Put all of your weight into your left leg and lunge the right foot to the right hand. So now the back foot is on the floor. You can't really see it, but it's on the floor and the toes are turned in just 45 degrees. Now I'm gonna rotate the left hip forward, pointing the left hip forward, pulling the right hip back. And the maypole is down through my back body, grounded in my back leg. Bend your front knee. So the front leg is kind of the support beam. It's not as important for the structure, but obviously it is for the balance. With the arms now, you're gonna take your arms up to the side, let them float overhead, turn the palms inwards, maybe even slightly back. You can look up, but mostly with your eyes, as opposed to tilting your head all the way back. Now the whole body becomes like the maypole, except for the breath. The breath is like the ribbons, fluid and flowing and light. Inhale. Now keeping the legs stable, let the arms come down. Just release the arms. Take a deep breath in here. Relax the arms, relax the shoulders. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, let your torso fold like you're taking a bow. Place your hands. You can step back right into downward dog for a few breaths, or you can come into your chaturanga, lowering down halfway, inhaling into upward dog, exhaling into downward dog. Pause here for a moment. Let's turn, step the right foot. Just straightening that a little bit. Step the right foot forward about half a step. Turn the toes out to the side. Put all of your weight on the right side and lunge your left foot to your left hand. So here you're going to turn that right hip forward. Back heel is grounded. Create the maypole experience down through the back body. You can lean forward a little bit, pull in the ribs. Now bend your front knee. Again, trying to work that right hip forward a bit which is why the back foot is turned in a little bit. Lift the lower belly, and again, when you're ready, let the arms float up. They don't have to touch. Look up at the space between the hands. Breathe. Softness in your eyes, in your face, in your breath. Exhale, arms down, bow. Slide your foot back, coming into plank, lowering into chaturanga. Find the maypole here in your chaturanga, then inhaling, upward dog. Downward dog for three deep breaths. Let your kidneys lift and expand. Let them blossom open. Relax your head so that there's no extra tension in your neck. On your next exhalation, bend your knees, keep your arms firm, step or jump your feet forward, inhale, and exhale, fold. Bending your knees, sit like you're sitting in a chair, create some stability in your legs, and then let your arms come forwards and up. 
And pushing off through the legs, lift the heart, and exhale let your arms float down. Without skipping a beat, let's separate the feet, hands to hips, lift your heart and lungs. Legs strong, lift the lower belly, the pelvic floor, and fold over your stable legs. You can bend your knees if you like. Let's grab your first two, wrap your first two fingers around your big toes. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders. Pull on your toes a little bit and lift your shoulders away from your ears. Let your torso just flow over your stable legs. Again, working with this, the dual action of structure and fluidity. In some of my practices, I call it the balance between structure and energy, the inner energy, the fluid, fluid light inner energy. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, bend your knees, bring your hands to your hips, press down through your legs and coming up. Exhale, feet together and pause. <clears throat> Let's step a quarter turn to the right or to the side. And we'll start with our feet parallel, hands on the hips. Now you're going to lift the sole of your right foot and open up the right foot and the right leg. The knee goes too. So you're rotating the hip, rotating the femur and the hip joint. Inhale. So legs are like the maypole. Exhale. Gently side bend and stretch up. So do it lightly. If you can't go all the way to the floor, not a problem. You can bring your hands to your front to your shin and extend, expand outwards. Like the wind has taken one of those ribbons up towards the sky. Deep breathing. Firming your legs and inhale slowly coming up. Exhale, release the arms. Turn your feet back to parallel and lift the sole of your left foot. Open up the left side. Inhaling, so your hip is open, your thighs open, your knees pointing out to the left. Take your arms out and side bend. Bring your left hand down and let your right arm float up. You can allow your head to turn, to open, expand in your torso naturally. I like to have the bottom arm stable. It's less impactful on the sacrum and lower back. Also, it helps us connect to the stability of our maypole here. Inhale, coming up. Turn your feet straight. Exhale, hands on your hips. Let's keep the feet in parallel position. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, fold forward. Bring your hands directly under your chest. Inhale, halfway up, creating like a flat back. Reach out through the crown of the head. Legs are stable, the grounding, the support beams of our maypole, full forward. Just pause for a moment, shake out the head. Bring your hands closer to the center. Inhale, coming up onto your fingertips. Then keep your left hand right under your heart and use your right hand to help you turn your torso. Keep your hips fixed, but just turn your torso and extend your right arm up towards the sky. If you'd prefer to keep your hand on your hip, you totally can. Legs strong, can you lean your weight forward a little bit? Take the pressure out from behind knee, the knees. Exhale, release the arm. Inhale, lift the heart. Place the right hand in the middle. Keep the legs firm and we'll slowly twist. So again, you can use your left arm to help you turn your ribs. Try to keep your hips fixed, your legs stable, and allow your breath to open you up on the left side. Exhale. 
Exhaling, slowly release. Press down through the legs. You can bend your knees and then inhale, push up. Exhale, release. Hands to the hips and hop your feet together. Pause. Let's hop the feet apart, this time a little bit wider. This time we're going to turn the right foot out to the side and bend the knees. Bring your hands to your hips. Deep breathing. We're going to come into like a warrior two. Warrior two with the shoulders relaxed and then release the arms. Just let them hang like the ribbons just hanging down when there is no breeze. And then using the breath, slowly start to expand the arms out to the side, bringing them up to the height of the shoulders, stretching out the fingers, but there's still a lightness in the arms, a stability in the legs, a lifting in the crown of the head. Let your body lift the arms a little bit as you inhale and lower as you exhale. Inhaling, exhale, lower the left arm, reach the right arm up, just straight up. And look up at the hand, bend the front knee. Legs stable, strong like the maypole. How many times am I gonna say that word in one practice, right? Inhale, come back up. Exhale, side bend the other way. Turning to open up. If you have a practice where you'd like to bring your arm down so that your arm, your right arm becomes part of the foundation of your maypole, you can. You can also keep the elbow and the knee, the palm facing up. And then bending both knees to help push you up. Exhale, let the arms come down. Let's switch the feet. Slowly turning the right foot to face forward, the left toes to turn out to the side, hands on your hips and just relax the shoulders. Let's come deep into that left lump, hip. Keep that left knee tracked over your ankle so it's stretching open out to the side. Let's relax the arms. And slowly turn your head to the left. Then breath by breath, allow your arms to gently expand as if carried on a breeze. A gentle breeze. Softness in your face. But the breath and the body move together. Gentle undulation, only possible if the foundation of your posture is stable. Next, we're gonna side bend backwards. So bring your right hand down, left arm alongside the ear. Breathe open. Let's take the arm straight up because that's what we did on the first side and I forgot. Then coming back to center and side bending, taking the right, coming into Parsva Konasana on the left side, left elbow on the hip, or on, sorry, on the thigh, right arm alongside the ear, or if you brought the left hand down on the first, or you brought the bottom arm down on the first side, you bring the left hand here. Legs strong, inhale, coming up. Exhale, releasing the arms, turning your feet in. And you can heel toe them back to center and or you can hop. Relax the shoulders, just walk it out, release. And come to the top of your mat if you're not already there. I might actually stay facing you so you can see me. We're just gonna do a little balancing pose. We'll do the tree. 
So we're going to actually imagine this is more like the maypole and less like the tree. But the maypole and the tree are, have similar qualities. They have the stab stability in the base, but the branches, just like the ribbons of the maypole, can extend. So you can stretch your arms up to the side and maybe lift them up. You can practice with your eyes open or closed. We're just going to do super simple tree pose. If you want to elaborate, you can bring your right hand down to your knee or thigh and extend the left arm alongside your ear, side bending a little bit to the right. I like to finish it with a gun mudra. Inhale, center, exhale, step down. Roll the shoulders back. Let's find stability down through the right leg and bring the left leg up into the inner shin or inner thigh, wherever it was placed on the first side. Find that stability down through the center of your body, like the stability of the maypole. Take the arms up, let them float up. You can stay here. You can practice with your eyes open or closed. And or you could side bend coming into what we call, normally we call this toppling tree. So you would press your left hand into your knee and let your right arm gently guide its way over to the left side. Put a little bit of tension between your right thigh and your left foot to keep that stability going. Some deep breathing. And then inhaling, coming up, and exhaling, stepping down, releasing. Separate your feet nice and wide. Inhale, well, about as wide as your shoulders. We're going to fold forward, bowing your head, shaking your head out, and coming into a squatting position. If this is uncomfortable for you, please just sit on the ground. And you can stretch open your chest. Deep breathing. Just adjust my camera here. So coming into the squat, it's okay if your heels don't touch the ground. You can keep your heels lifted. Let's stretch forward. And then slide the hands back. Let's set the intention for the arm balance. You don't have to do it, but it's nice. It's a nice practice. So you'll start with your elbows, turn your hands back under your shoulders, and your elbows will turn out to the side. So you bend your elbows, but then you're going to pull them back to your shins. So you're going to have them kind of bent, but towards your shins. It's a lot easier if your knees are above your elbows. Then lift your hip, hips to the height of your shoulders, round your back. Look forward slightly and keep those arms stable. Find that maple strength through the arms, wrists stable, and then let your feet pick up lightly. We also, this posture is called the crow, bakasana, the crow. So you want to have some stability in the arms here to find your balance and lightness in the torso, in the feet, so that you can lift off. If your feet are up, bring them together. Round the back, squeeze the knees into the upper arm bones, and then you'll slowly come down as if you're just landing on a branch. And then we'll sit back. Let's bring the feet together, knees apart. Inhale, this is like a total spring flow here. Inhale and fold forward into Baddha Konasana. So feet together, knees apart. Holding forward. If you want to elevate your seat a little bit, you'll have a bit more leverage. In English, we often call this posture the butterfly. So, hence, it's fitting for spring. Let's let the hips open like the wings of a butterfly. 
push your elbows down and out to the side, mostly out to the side and then down, just to create a bit of opening between the femur, the head of the femur and the hip. Inhaling, slowly come up. Let's bring the knees together, coming into boat, activating the core. Shoulders back, lift the chest. So seat is stable. So like the maypole is like right here. Now open your knees so your feet are together and you're going to catch your elbows, catch, catch under your elbows like so. So like this and bring your feet together, knees apart. So as you may know, I have used to teach kids yoga. I still do a little bit, but I used to teach it almost exclusively when I first started teaching. And this was a favorite because it was the flower pose. And I thought it would be fitting for today. So you can look up. You can even do a little mudra with your fingers. And then slowly catch your feet, then bring them back, come into boat, boat pose here. Leaning back like you're in a rowboat. And then cross your feet and ankles, place your hands in front of you, step back into plank and lower down onto your stomach. Let's take the arms back. So this posture is often called the Ashalabhasana, but in English we call it the grasshopper. So let's roll the shoulders back. Another lovely spring inspired posture, lifting your torso and then lifting your legs. Let's keep the back of the hands on the floor. We'll activate the back body here. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards the center. Now change nothing in your torso except bring your hands forward. Press your hands down and lift your heart forwards and up. Imagine that you're squeezing something in between your upper thighs and in your shins so that your inner legs activate. And then push on the hands, rock yourself up into upward dog. Bring your knees down, shift back into downward dog. Come forward to a seated position. Almost done our practice for today. Slide the hips forward and lie back. So the most important thing about the spine is that it is both stable and flexible. So let's work on the flexibility of the spine now. And what I would like you to do is to really concentrate on the opening of the front body. Because sometimes the tension we hold in the front of our body is what restricts the mobility of the spine. So we're going to start by inhale, peeling the back off the ground, lifting the hips, lifting the chest, and then exhaling, coming down all the way, one vertebrae at a time. And again, Inhaling, coming up, and exhaling, going down. Inhaling, coming up, peeling the back off the ground. Tuck your shoulders under, lift your heart. Exhaling down, one vertebrae at a time. Feet pressing down, lift the sacrum, the tailbone up. Open your chest. Now you can extend your arms and interlace your fingers behind your back. Press down through the, ri the wrists. Press down through the feet. Imagine that you're squeezing a ball between your upper thighs, just so that you keep a little inner action of the inner thighs, inner legs. And then you can release your hands and come down one vertebrae at a time. You can repeat the same posture for five, six breaths. If you'd like, you can also work on the variations towards wheel. So if you're doing the, the steps towards wheel, you can stop at any point and I'll give you the options. You would place your hands beside your ears, your fingers pointing towards your shoulders. And just like before, you'll press into your legs and you'll peel your back off the ground, lifting your hips. 
So one option is to stay here and do five deep breaths. So it's pretty much the posture you did before, except with your hands beside your ears. Another option is to press strongly your upper arm bones into the ground to lift your hips and slowly press in your hands and come onto the top of your head. Pull your shoulders back and then you can push yourself up. Breathe. When you're ready to come down, bring your chin into your chest and then lower down one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time to the floor. So you can repeat one more time if you'd like. And if you're done, you can get yourself ready for final relaxation. You can bring your knees into your chest. You can rock side to side. If you'd like to do one more, we'll do it together. When you're ready, press on your feet. Lifting the tailbone up, allowing your torso to open. Open the torso, stable legs. The legs are the maypole. The spine is like the ribbons. And slowly let your breath carry you to the crown of the head. And then up. When you're ready, chin to chest, come down on your shoulder blades, and then lower one vertebrae at a time to the ground. Pick up your feet and wrap your arms around your legs. Massage your back. Maybe you'd like to go into a twist. Take your knees to one side. Breathe. Then just do, let's do one more breath before we switch over. And then slowly coming back to center. And we'll switch over to the right or to the opposite side, whatever side you haven't done yet. Twisting. Just using the breath to enjoy the stretch. And then returning to center. If there's any other postures that your, bo your body feels like it needs to do, maybe happy baby or a child's pose, you could do those now. And to close our practice, you can either bring your feet together and your knees apart like so and rest in Supta Baddha Konasana. I prefer if you rest like this with something under your knees, either with two cushions or two blocks. This is a good option if you're menstruating or if you have any heart issues or any like um, any posh, any reasons why you shouldn't be going upside down. If you um, are fine to invert today, you can turn so that your legs are up the wall and you may also want to slide something underneath your hips to give you a little bit more elevation. So I can, I'll take a block, but you can also take a rolled blanket or anything and we will complete our practice just for a few minutes in this position. Um, I'll set a timer for three minutes and then you can stay longer if you'd like. So just take the time that you need to get set up. It's definitely worth it. Taking a deep breath in and a slow breath out. 
allowing your breath to calm down. Lengthen the back of your neck. If you have your hips elevated, just allow the weight of your hips, your legs to descend into the block or to whatever support is under your hips. Allow yourself to ground and stabilize. Let go. And allow the front of your chest to smile open. The back of your neck and the back of your skull to also do the same. Perhaps that smile will be reflected onto your face, in your lips, in the corners of your eyes, across your forehead. inside your brain, across the brain. As you relax and release any accumulated tension in your body, you offer the space for a new conversation, a new possibility to awaken, to rejuvenate, to enlighten each and every one of your cells so that each and every one of your cells shine like their own little sun shines that they are, the little suns that they are. Imagine that each one of your cells has a tiny little smile. You are welcome to stay here for as long as you'd like. And when you're ready, coming off the block, rolling off and taking your time to come to a seated position. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Happy May Day, happy May, happy spring. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>